Don't you agree? Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still the hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the hill, Done sure, I know he'll hear me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't see. And if the winds keep blowing, my soul is anchored in the Lord. When my friends have gone 
and left me by myself. And the road seems to get longer day by day. and downs and my God will give me strength to fight the fight and make it through the toils and snares of this old world and present day Sometimes in my life I'm gonna be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, Some things I may not know.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Sugar Creek Church of Christ in our Winning Wednesday Bible class. We're going to open up with a word of prayer and a verse of a song, and then we'll have our brother Jack McNeil. Let us bow a word of prayer. Mighty God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come together once again in your name to get a better understanding of your will and your way. Lord, help us to leave our cares and concerns behind. We may be able to focus on you this evening. And it's in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. I'm going to hide behind, oh, hide behind the mom. You know I'm going to hide behind, oh, hide behind the mom. You know I'm going to hide behind, oh, hide behind the mountain. I'm so sorry. Cause I'm going where the chill it, chill it. Those freezing winds, they don't blow. Oh, one more time, his name is Jesus. Yes, he is, he is my mount. They say his name is Jesus. Jesus is, no, Jesus is my mom. Hound. They said his name is Jim. Jesus is, Jesus is my mom. Hound. Cause I'm going where the chilly, chilly, those freezing winds, they don't blow. Oh. The chilly winds don't blow. Amen. What a wonderful song. Going where the chilly winds don't blow. And if they do blow, we just wrap our arms around Jesus. Amen, somebody. It's a blessing to be out tonight, and we are certainly impressed with this audience and those who have come. And we know that many are listening uh, on live streaming and we are grateful uh, that you're taking out time to see if there'll be a word from the Lord. Uh, just before we get into our study, we have some announcements we want to make. And so we ask that you would take note, pay attention, that you might get these, uh, th this information real good. Well, uh, I'll say it again. It's been said many times. Our gospel meeting is right around the corner. And we're looking at June <clears throat> 3rd through the 8th. Do want you to know on the weekdays, <clears throat> uh, Monday through Wednesday, uh, 7 o'clock in the evening, that's Monday through Wednesday. Sunday, we're going to be here for Bible class and worship service at our normal times. And then right after we have dinner, and we do have the uh, mortgage uh, burning uh, celebration, and then we'll have uh, dinner right after that, perhaps about 3 o'clock, we'll have a second service. We'll have a second service. So let us be prepared let us make ready ourselves for this great, great endeavor. It is a tremendous enterprise trying to bring uh, men and women to Christ. <clears throat> we ask the congregation to invite at least, how many? 15, come on now, 15 people. Get your list out and, and make sure we at least try to touch bases with 15 people that they might come and hear the word of God. Many souls can be saved when we have uh, gospel meetings such as this. And so we encourage you. Uh, to work real diligently for that. Uh, on that Friday, I have been informed by Mike Smith, and that is one of the youth coordinators, uh, that the young people will be here. They're going to have the bouncy house. They're going to have cookouts, and certainly we're going to be there for the fish fry. And so that's going to take place 5, uh, 6 o'clock Friday. So make sure we have... <clears throat> Uh, plans to go and participate in that. And then on Saturday, we have our sisters lunching, and uh, I believe they're going to start about 10 o'clock with the program. Uh, Sister Pam Leonard, our speaker is Wesley Leonard. His wife, Pam Leonard, is going to be the, sp the speaker, uh, excuse me, the speaker for that event. And they have informed me that they're going to have a wonderful ladies' luncheon. It's a ladies' luncheon, but I'm going to try to slide in there and get me a plate. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> And then, amen, and then that evening we're going to have our concert. Uh, we know we have Revelation, uh, the group coming from Orlando, Florida, and other local groups are going to come and be, uh, entertain us in a spiritual way, lift us up and encourage our spirits uh, with those melodious songs that they sing uh, so beautifully. I, I, when, when I hear singing groups sing, I say sing pretty. Go ahead and sing pretty, amen. 
and uh, we're looking forward to that. <clears throat> also, we want you to know that at the end of this session tonight, we're going to have prayer service, and because we're going to do that, we don't want to, uh, you know, kind of spend time finding out who we need to pray for at that moment. So we ask even now that you fill out your prayer requests and those that are online, go ahead and send yours in now. So when we end the class, which is about quarter to eight, uh, we'll have that information to pray in your behalf. So keep all that in mind. We also talked about how we're going to have, hmm, we're going to have a spring cleaning that Saturday before the gospel meeting. So that is a spring cleaning. That's for everybody. Uh, we know uh, uh, Sister Gloria and and Sam, they do a wonderful job with the building, but spring cleaning, that means we get every crack and crammy. <laughs> we get everything. Thank you, brother. We appreciate that. And uh, so we ask everyone to come out and be a part of the cleaning uh, here to the building. We want our house looking good as we invite others to come. Now, as I continue to say, hmm, excuse me, that Paul is still messing with me. As I continue to say, when we get busy, the devil gets busy too. I'm telling you, the devil's going to get busy sometime. You don't understand how busy the devil gets. You'll see the devil in folk that you ain't never seen the devil in before. So that's sister so-and-so. What's happening? That devil gets busy. And he doesn't stay on the outside. He get into us. So be patient with one another. Uh, extend yourself. Uh, stretch yourself. Stretch your faith. Uh, don't let him overcome us. Let's overcome him. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. And so other things will be announced. And we'll make sure we get that information to you. Uh, but this is enough to get us get us started. All right, all right. Now, tonight, Acts chapter 17. Acts the 17th chapter. Acts the 17th chapter. And we're going to look at verse number 16. Acts the 17th chapter. And we'll start with verse number 16. Now, if we had to give this lesson tonight a topic... We would call it the uh, when the educators get educated. I said when the educators get educated. Uh, you will notice in this portion of Acts chapter 17, we're going to be dealing with the philosophers, the Epicureans and the Stoics. And um, we're going to talk about their <clears throat> philosophical approaches to things. But yet Paul came and educated those educators. Uh, Athens was a place such as that where uh, big thinking took place. Uh, I think Athens is where uh, numbers began and uh, politics usually had their strength in these particular places. Uh, language began and all kind of heavy stuff. And they thought they were all that yeah, until Paul came to town speaking about Jesus and the resurrection. And so here we'll find in Acts chapter 17, we're going to find <clears throat> not only material that addresses their concerns, but material we can use for the people in our community as well. I think last week we talked about any kind of person you know with any kind of background, any kind of experience in life. There's someone in the Bible who was converted to Jesus that probably falls in that category. Amen. The Jews and, and thieves and, and religionists. Here we find educators, uh, business people, uh, the jailer. Everybody came from you know, one part or the other, one part of the country or the other, and yet the word of God fits everybody. And so be comfortable when you talk to whoever you talk to because the word of God is designed for them as well. All right, Acts chapter 17 and we will start reading a few verses from verse number 16. Brother Mark, what does that say? Now when Paul waited for them at now, Athens. Now when Paul waited for them at Athens. His spirit was stirred in his him. His spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city holy uh, given to idolatry. When he saw idolatry. the city holy given in idolatry. Therefore disputed he, he in disputed, the synagogue. Uh, Paul, when, he, when his spirit was stirred, Paul did something about the Bible says, therefore he disputed the uh -huh. In the synagogue in with the, the Jews. In the synagogue with the Jews. And with the devout persons. And with the devout persons. In the market daily and with the them. the market daily with them that met with him. Now, we ought to be stirred as well. The Apostle Paul went into this place of Athens and began to look around and he saw all kind of disturbing things in relationship to a man in his relationship with God. And when we as uh, members of the church, those that uh, have the truth and support the truth, knowing that the truth will set you free, when we see things in our uh, neighborhood 
at our job site, at our schools, in our family, at gatherings, wherever we're at, uh, allow yourself to get stirred a little bit. Amen. Don't, don't let them stir you till you buy into what they're doing. Amen, somebody. Sometimes Christians, they, they see all the fun and the activities of the world, and they are drawn to that. But we ought to cause them to be drawn to us. But we got to be stirred first. Remember Paul at another point said, my heart desire and prayer for God, for Israel, is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They go about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And so Paul had this desire. Paul, he allowed his spirit to be stirred. Amen. Don't be so stoic. Amen, Christians. Don't be so laid back. Mm. Don't be too cool. Amen. Amen. We, we got to, you know, kind of, be affected by uh, the conditions of the world. We really have to be moved by the sadness of this world and the, de uh, the debauchery of this world, how people are that being truckloaded to hell. We have to do something about that. Well, Paul, he's a good example. He shows us that when he saw all this stuff, the city wholly given to idolatry, there was idols everywhere. And uh, uh, Athens was a place where uh, every man had his God. There were so many gods. Brother Mendenhall, there were so many gods that you had. Everybody can claim this is my God, this is my God, this is my God. Just all kind of stuff. And there was just too much for the Apostle Paul to bear. And so he was stirred. He was, he was moved by this. He knew this was wrong. Y'all all right? All right. Verse number 17 says what? 18. We're in 18. I'm sorry. Then a certain <clears throat> philosophers of the Epicureans. Now watch this. Here's the education. Now certain philosophers of the Epicureans. And the Stoics. And the Stoics. Encountered him. Encountered him. And said, what will this and babbler said, say? what will this babbler say? Of the sum, he seemeth to be a setter. He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods. Because he preached unto Why them Jesus. Why is he a setter forth of strange gods? Because he is preaching uh, Jesus and the resurrection. This would be a good Easter sermon right here. Amen, somebody. Well, notice a couple of things in this verse. First of all, I want you to know that they considered him a babbler. Now, a, bab a babbler is not a blabber. You know how we blabber with our mouth? It's, that's not what it's talking about. A babbler was a seed picker that just went around, went about picking things and, and, and you know, kind of making something out of nothing, so to speak. And sometimes when you make that, when you correlate that with a person, it's, it's like a person that has uh, just a lot of things to say, a lot of physico philosophical things to say and whatnot. So they kind of threw Paul in that category. He's over there preaching Jesus and the resurrection. They said, who is this babbler? Well, who are these people? The Bible says <clears throat> they were Epicureans and Stoics. Now, around 500 BC, prior to these guys, you had the Socrates, Aristotles, and Plato's. It is said that Socrates taught Aristotle. And so they were uh, kind of concerned about the questions of the world in that day. Where did we come from? Where are we going? And they would sit around and just philosophize of this. Now, if you go to China, they, they had Buddha and, and, and Confucius. They were the philosophers. You see, the world will, man, excuse me, mankind, God gave us a brain, didn't he? And, and our brain, our mind, our, our, you know, our ways, our idiosyncrasisms, we have a yearning for things. We want to know. We want to find out stuff that we don't readily see on the surface. So they sat and they dug through their hearts and their minds for years. Philosophers were like that. Now, the Word of God certainly fulfills a man with all the answers that he needs, but they weren't concerned so much about following God through a book. Amen, somebody. They just set themselves. The Bible says, it's not in man that walketh, what? To direct his own. You got to, what, go outside yourself, Brother Mark, to find answers. If you just sit around and think that, you know, I'm going to just kind of put things together as they line up within my mind and my heart, you'll never be able to find the truth because the Bible said it's not in man. It's just not in us. God has it. So we have to seek, we have to seek the Lord. So you have these 
philosophers, um, the Epicureans and the Stoics. And they were the ones that challenged the Apostle Paul. They said, who is this? We got to check this guy out. But I want you to understand, they didn't mind that. That was their, that's the way they rolled. They, 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 they invited or, you know, were, were encouraged that people were saying new things in town. In fact, we don't get to the scripture that says they just sat around seeking for something new. So here we find the Apostle Paul is going to have to, he's going to have to be sharp now. Paul's going to have to have his game together because these guys, they got their game together. And so it is with us. Every now and then you run to someone, they know a lot of stuff too. Amen, somebody. They know this, that, and the other, and they could go tit for tat with you in, in conversation. But Paul, what I like about Paul is he didn't leave his station. He didn't try to philosophically gesture with them. He stayed with Jesus and the resurrection. So that's what we need to do, church. You're going to run to someone that may have a little bit of kidneys above the shirt collar. Amen. But you just what? Stay with the scriptures. Stay with the story. Stay with the plan of God. Stay with the simplicity of truth. Amen. Doesn't matter who you face. Because when you stay with truth, guess what? You ain't by yourself. The Lord is with you when you're with his word. Amen. And so, so God is right there. The spirit of the Lord is working with Paul as they began. So <clears throat> verse number 19 says what? And they took him and brought him into Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. See, see they wanted it, you know. And uh, they took him and brought him to Areopagus, saying, may we know. See, that was, man, that was their day. That was the fulfillment of their daily desires, to have someone that we can exercise our knowledge with. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you run to someone that think they know something, they will, they will take all your time. Ain't said nothing. <laughs> Running around with your nose all snotty. If you don't know what you're doing, ask somebody. You don't know what you're doing. It sound good to them. You know, people listen to how they sound. This sounds good. I'll, I'll just keep this up. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. It's, it's something how God uh, will, will, will place you in a place where they may be taking you somewhere to either try to embarrass you or try to show you up. Mm -hmm. But actuality, they put him on a larger stage when they brought him oh, here. Oh, yes. So a lot of folks heard the gospel this day. Yeah, now Areopagus is also called Mars Hill. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But man, God, God had to be in this. Yeah. He's going to get some attention now. The gospel is going to get some attention now. Jesus is going to get some attention now because they're going to ask Paul some questions. <clears throat> um, Jack Evans, bless his heart, he has passed. But Jack was a great debater. And um, when Jack was debating uh, Wallace Muhammad, he tried to get Farrakhan and, and uh, Elijah Muhammad in, in, in those days, but he couldn't get it. But he did get Wallace Muhammad. That was the Christians uh, debating against the Muslims. And you know Jack, he, he knows the Bible and the Quran <laughs> more than them. So he was wearing them out. There was a fella who was a Muslim in the audience, his name was Jeremiah Cummings. Jeremiah Cummings was in the audience. And uh, after a while, uh, he recognized that uh, Jack had something to say. And so he would, was desirous to follow up and have classes and whatnot with Jack. Well, eventually, uh, we baptized him. Jack and the brothers, they got with him, taught him, and he was baptized into the Church of Christ. Now, he's had his ups and downs because he didn't, he's still whatever. But it was ironic that this guy was honest enough to hear his man and to hear Brother Evans and recognize we ain't got a leg to stand on. Say amen when you can. You see, honest people will truthfully look at a debate, look at an argument, and consider who's right. No matter who is right, but who's right. I want to follow the one that's right no matter who he is. And so he came out the Muslim faith, and uh, he has uh, been kind of floating around and whatnot. But I thought it was interesting that um, he not only came out while he was there, he was one of the ministers. He had his temple. Amen. He was, so he was somebody in the Muslim faith. Uh, but it doesn't matter who you are. When you hear truth and you're honest, uh, it's going to move you to make a decision to follow truth. 
And, and so uh, this works not, in, not only in the first century, it works in the 21st century, the 20th century, that truth is always powerful enough to shake you out of your position. So here we find that they want to talk to Paul. They want to question him about what they heard, this new doctrine. Now, we all know doctrine means teaching. So Paul, we have to accredit Paul. Uh, we have to thank Paul for teaching. And his teachings was known to others. And so that's why the, uh, the philosophers said, we want to know this new doctrine. Yeah, today, if it's new, it ain't true. And if it's true, it ain't new. Amen, somebody. It's the word of God, and that is not new. It's new to people who have been following uh, denominational teachings. Uh, one of the things that um, I have noticed, we, uh, you know, we may mention that we have a TV program down in Columbia. And um, right after our program, a guy comes on, his name is Jennings. He calls himself an apostle. So I said, okay. Now he is not an apostle assigned to that position by Jesus or God. The apostles did not lay hands on him. He's a self-made apostle. Amen. And, and if, you, if, if you just listen to the religionists of our work, all these positions that they're in, they had self-made them. God didn't give them those positions. And, and this is what we have to deal with, people that take a little bit of Bible and make application to themselves and come up with something that is foreign to the Bible. All right, the Bible says in verse 20 what? For thou bringest certain strange th teachings or things to our ears. Uh -huh. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. So they a a question in there. What does this mean? I like that uh, when people ask questions. What does this mean? Not that they're going to buy into it, just that they are prying to the point where they can have some understanding. What does it mean, this Jesus, the resurrection, etc.? Next verse says, what, 21. For all the Athens and the strangers which were there spent their time all in nothing All the else. Athenians. And strangers which were there, as we stated before, spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to what? Here's Hear new. some new thing. That was their way. And, and there in Areopagus was the place where they just sat around and listened and, and, and divided split straws, etc. Just trying to pick you apart. And that's where they had Paul. I wish we had more setups like that now. I wish that we had debates on CNN. Amen, somebody. Y'all know what's happening in our political world, I guess in the, uh, I don't want to call it religious, but in, in society. Roe versus Wade. Y'all know what that means. It's been around for 50 years, Roe versus Wade. It means that women had a right to choose uh, they, if they wanted an abortion, they could have one and all the ramifications to go along with that. <clears throat> but the Supreme Justice has now got together and it looked like they're trying to overturn that. Yeah. Now that's big talk. Yeah. I mean, that is some heavy stuff that's going on in our world, especially in our country today. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could uh, have a platform like that on CNN and say Christianity versus Judaism? <laughs> Amen, somebody. We got to do all we can do in the little spaces that we have been brought in or live in because we're not going to get a stage like that. Every now and then we'll get something. But it's been my experience that they try to embarrass us as Christians. Uh, they try to mock us and shame us. And they got more time to do so on the TV because we'll say a few things and leave and they'll twist our words. We have to make a, we got to make a, a, our mark in those little spots that you find this in with that one-on-one, -on -one, with that uncle, with that grandmother, with that cousin, with that social worker or neighbor, or a person at your job. Do your thing right there. Make that your Areopagus. Make that your Mars Hill. And, and talk about Jesus in a serious way and profound way, amen. Christianity need to be looked at more seriously than the way we look at it now. I even notice in the church that sometimes if we're not careful, uh, this spiritual school of education, which is the church house, we will make a mockery of it. And we, we don't really study and really listen and really have a heart and a desire to find out deep truths 
But we ought to, church. We ought to. We ought to. I'm sorry, we got some thoughts back there. When we think about um, talking to other people, it's important that we're aware of what's being said in the media and, and in um, the religious world. Because we have the truth. Yeah. And that gives us a, a time to be able to share the truth and be able to help other people see that what they're being told is not what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. But we have to know the Bible well enough to know book, chapter, and verse. Because when we tell people something, the Bible says it, then we need to be able to, to um, confirm in the book, with book, chapter, and verse where it's at in the Bible. That's right. Because we hear things all the time. Yeah. But do we defend the word of God? Do we yeah. defend um, our religious beliefs? That's right. When we hear things. And sometimes that people will change, but they got to have someone to give them that access. Yeah. Um, don't let anyone dumb you down. Uh, we've had children who were very brilliant, very, you know, had great talent. And they wanted to hang around other children because they needed that kind of interacting as children have. But they looked, they realized that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little above them. And so to fit in with those characters, <laughs> they would dummy down. Be like them. Yeah. Uh, in the church, those that have knowledge and understanding and a desire to even get more, don't come down. Help the church to come up. Yeah. Amen, somebody. You know, sometimes there are members of the church that don't want much, don't want to study much, don't want to, and they don't want to hear anybody that's saying anything worth anything. So don't, don't, let, uh, don't let others dumb you down. You know, stay with a, keep the bar high enough so people have to reach a little more. And, and if they don't get over it, fall trying to uh, get over it, fall trying to reach that area. But we need, you know, an educated church. What did Paul say one time? Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. <laughs> that was his concern. I don't want you ignorant. And we shouldn't want one another ignorant. Uh, the teaching of the word of God is necessary. It's, it's a nest. Christianity is a teaching religion. Amen, somebody. So uh, they, they want to ask Paul some questions. And let's get into the thick of things. The next verse says what? Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. Verse number said, 22. Uh, it says, then Paul stood <laughs> in the midst of Mars Hill. Uh -huh. And said, he men said, Athens, "Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in I all perceive things, that you, are in all things you are too superstitious. Some translation may say too religious. For, I, for, for as I pass by, and this is why I think y'all too superstitious. For when I pass by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly whom worship. Therefore you ignorantly worship." Him declare I Him unto you. declare I unto you. God that made the now, world. Now, now, watch this, church. Go back, go back. Uh, 23, watch this. Um, we know Paul got stirred up. He is repeating that almost. He says, as I passed by and beheld your devotion. Again, in Athens, they had all kind of religious trappings temples and monuments and idols, all of this. And Paul, you know, I guess Paul, look, what, look, look at that. Oh my goodness. But notice church, they didn't have anything to represent God properly. But when they didn't have anything to represent the Jewish God, they're not even concerned about Christianity because it's still new, but the Jewish God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when they didn't have anything for that, they knew they had a God, so they just called that God the unknown God. That's right. That's right. Paul said, you know, y'all talking about that unknown God? That's why I'm here. I'm going to declare him unto you. Amen, Amen somebody. So, so here we have a great opportunity for the philosophers to include. Well, many of them will never follow God, but at least they're going to have God now in their ranks because Paul said, I'm going to declare him unto you. You know about all these other gods. You've given, you've, you've given your allegiance, your devotion to all these other gods. But I saw, this, I saw this unknown God image. Let me tell you who that is. Let me tell you about the Church of Christ. That's our task. People, they, they throw us in the category, don't they? Y'all just wanted them. One of the denomin they would say, what denomination are you? Now watch the Church of Christ. Don't say, well, we are. First tell them, we ain't or we are not a denomination. Amen. Just 
Just clear that up first. We are not a denominator. We didn't come from something. We didn't come from something that has started and broke off. No, no. We, we, we didn't, we, we're not a dime that broke off from the dollar. We're not a quarter that broke off from the dollar. We, we are a unit. We are the church. We are the church in the Bible. Now see, you know as well as I know that the world here in America is full of religion, but there's places where church Christ not even known. When I went back to Pittsburgh, because I did some mission work there for about two years, when, that's my home, Pittsburgh. When I went back, uh, Fifth and Beachwood Church of Christ, right downtown uh, in Pittsburgh, Pitt University, not too far away. I just was rubbing my hands together. Look at the opportunity that we have here. When I went there, uh, I tried to look at the geographical kind of layout, and something kept telling me when I came up as a little boy, something kept telling me, Jack, you didn't live far from here. Now, I did not know about the Church of Christ, but it was there. And I'm trying to find the proximity of where my house was to this building. So I got in my car. Brother Jones, I went a mile and a half and ran into my old house. And I said to myself, I didn't leave Pittsburgh until I was about 17, 18. I said to myself, parents, friends, nobody knew about the church prayer. I said, what was the church doing if we're this close to the building and hadn't heard anything about it. Now, <laughs> when I went back and preached that Sunday, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm shaming y'all. They said, what's wrong? I said, my family came up a mile and a half from this place. We Y'all wasn't loud enough. They said, what are you talking about? I said, we didn't hear about the Church of Christ. I was in the Baptist Church. You heard about Methodist Church, and Holiness Church, all kinds of, and the Church of Christ right there. I said, what were y'all doing? Well, they knew where I was coming from from, from then on. <laughs> We're going to make some noise around here. Yeah. Amen. They didn't know. The unknown God. Sometimes the church is the unknown church. Yeah. 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 And they think we knew. And when they get the little information about it, they say, well, y'all are Camelites, aren't you? Mm. you no, know, we're not no Camelites. <laughs> Those were the restorers. They were restoring something that was already there. You know, remember Barton W. Stone and O'Kelly and Thomas uh, Campbell and Alexander. Those great men, appreciate them, but they were just restoring something that was there all along. But why did they say we're Camelot? Because we're unknown. Amen, church. Come on. Those of you that are listening online, let's get it together. We are unknown. And that, we're the greatest institution in the world. Jesus died for this church. And people don't know it. Hmm. One of my dreams, and my wife and I talk about it all the time, I don't know if it will come to fruition, but I said, I, I wish we had 100 acres of land, we can have a museum called the Church of Christ Museum. Not so much as the church being there, because that can turn people off, just a museum that tell you about the church. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You know, we have been did a wonderful thing there in Washington, we got the African American Museum. Now people can come in there and say, well, where did they came from? What was their journey? What was the odyssey of people from Africa? And they go all through the stream of time. I would like to have a situation where we had a place where people come and they see the origin of the church, even from eternity past, because the Church of Christ is all through the Old Testament. And since we don't have that, we better make this, <laughs> the Church of Christ buildings, uh, the Christians in the church, we better make this our, our museum. <laughs> and tell for where we came from and how things develop in God's plan to save man through that church that Jesus built. We cannot afford to have an unknown church anymore. Come on, church. Yeah. We cannot afford to have an unknown church anymore. Well, uh, any thoughts? I'm running my big mouth. Any thoughts? Let me give you all an opportunity. Uh, I see you two gentlemen from, from, the, uh, from my right. These, these are the two tight ends over here. Uh, they're getting ready to run or something. Uh, brother Mendenhall, Mendenhall and then Brother Jones, go ahead. Yeah, you was talking about that, uh, the unknown church. And I have a question. How many, and like you said, you want to see to come to fruition that we have a museum. How many church, uh, uh, 
Churches of Christ schools do we have? The reason why I asked that question, because where I came from, we had a class, and it came up about, why is I, we losing our young people to all these other things? And I asked the question, why don't we have Churches of Christ schools? Because when you deal with the Jews, they have their schools. Mm. Catholics have their schools. Presbyterians, Presbyterians have their school. Uh, Muslims have their school. Why don't we have our school? We've been in, in existing in this modern world for a long time. Why don't we have Churches of Christ school where we could teach our young and bring them up right instead of letting the world teach them? Yeah. We have schools, but we don't have enough. We, we have Hardy University, and we you know we have Southwest Christian College and, and other places. We have, but I'm like you, that ain't enough. When you think about what the Baptists have, what the Methodists have, what the world has. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes when we have a school, uh, this is unfortunate, but sometimes when we have a school, especially a black college, we don't support it right. It, it falls. There's a lot to be desired that's there. The and that's not the children's fault. That's our fault. I mean, we that are responsible, got the money in our pocket, can be influential. Sometimes we let a good thing just drain out. Yeah, it's just so many things working against us. That's why we remain unknown. Yes, sir. So, one, more, one more thought, and then we'll get to Brother Jones. Go ahead with Brother Mendenhall. He had a follow-up thought. Go ahead. Uh, yes, that's fine. You're talking about colleges. Yeah. But what about our young people? All right. Uh, high school, uh, uh, elementary school, because... With the law and what the government trying to do now with mm -hmm. homosexuality, yeah. they want to teach these young people yeah. at two and second grade and third grade mm -hmm. sexuality. Yeah, sexuality. Now you wouldn't <laughs> teach them. Now you have to be a certain age to be able to, if you want to teach these children all about um, what's the, they have different subjects that they have to be a certain age before you can teach them. Right. Matter of fact, they want me to teach. Uh, Afro-American history. Yeah. But you get, you let the uh, homosexuality take over this world. Watch out. And you want to put this in the minds in these children that can be, you know, you, uh, two men get together, two women get together, and you want to teach them that that's okay. Yeah. That yeah. is not okay. It's not. And so if we had these schools, yeah. We wouldn't have to send them to this foolishness that's out here. Give us some time here at Sugar Creek. We're going to have that school. And uh, we're, we're not so much talking about, you know, you make a, a good point that it opens, it splinters out to so many areas. And we're not talking so much as the first to 12th grade, although that's necessary. We're talking about just a school, a chapel, where kids can come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, in a daytime setting and just be taught things such as you're talking about, homosexuality. We had a class last night and a sister, she's a counselor, she said she pulled her daughter out of the class because they were going to teach about sex. And they reprimanded her. They said, why, won't, why did you take her out? Uh, this is going to perhaps influence others maybe to come out the class too. She said, in matters of sexuality, I'll teach my child. Because she knew what they were going to do. Yeah. They were going to have that alternative lifestyle type teaching where you can be homosexual and it can be accepted. So uh, until that time comes, we got to do our own teaching. Amen. Amen, somebody. I'm sorry. We'll get to you, Brother Jones. If we notice, a Paul did wait for them to come to him. He went to them. Paul went to them. So I say, the called out need to go out. He said, the called out, who is the church, the Christian, need to go out. Yeah. And when we look at that passage that says, go into all the world, it's literally not talking about get on a boat. It's talking about as you go, as you go to work, as you go across the street, as you go to Piggly, as you go, take the word of God. Uh, Brother Mark. Uh, all of what we're saying starts from here from what Paul is about to do in verse 24. It's important for us as a, as a, as a church to make sure that we are preaching and teaching those things. Mm -hmm. And we have men that are serious mm -hmm. about the gospel call going out and teaching. That's right. Families being the example, going out into their, as you say, into their world and their individual communities being that example and teaching. Yeah. And that's how it spreads, the foundation spread. Yeah. Uh, Brother Mendenhall said something that was uh, uh, on point, and that is the schools, not the colleges. 
They have a few of those. I know the one in Charleston, we sent our children to that one. It was a good school. I, I think it did more than just the religious matters. They taught on the level of you know, the secular schools. So we have a, some of them, but not enough. And until that time comes, the church has to be the school. And, and, and shame on us when we members of Sugar Creek have children and we don't bring them to Bible class. Let me say that again. Let me just say that again, because sometimes we shy away from the necessities of things. We have all these classes here and teachers ready, but our people are not serious enough about training our children in a spiritual way. We could teach them. They can ask questions about homosexuality, about being gay, uh, about uh, marriage and things of that nature that they're going to eventually run into unprepared, unequipped. So uh, I, I say I make the appeal to all of us. Uh, let's take our children serious, as serious as we do with the secular world. We'll make sure they get clothes, you know, the year turns around and it's time to go back to school. We get them book bags and, and all kind of clothes and computers and everything. Why, preparing them for this school system. Well, what about the spiritual side of things? Come on, church. We got to do better than that. We got to do better. Uh, yes, ma'am. Our time is, boy, we up on Mars Hill right now. Hey, Amen. We're on Areopagus. Go ahead. 35 years ago, I seen the need for Sisters of Fellowship because we can come together every Sunday and never build any bonds, any relationship. And if I'm going to be my sister's keeper, if I'm going through some trial, I should be able to call my sister and be able to talk and have some encouragement. So I started a retreat, the Santee Ladies Retreat. And through the years, it grew and we shared and, and helped one another grow spiritually. Then we started a program for the girls. Yeah. And we got sisters who were coming who were teachers, be able to teach them scripture rather than being in school just teaching math and, and, and That's right. reading. But here we are 35 years later and it's still going on. If there's a need and we see a need, then we need to try and do what we can to yeah. help make it happen. But at the same time, know and have faith and trust in people that are in the church to help you with that need. Yeah. Because their sisters want... have been part of it and are part of the board. And 35 years ago when I started it, I had no idea that my it's daughter really ended up being now, 35 years later, yeah. the person who's now. We, we want person. you, yeah, we want you married uh, when the proper time comes. Is get with the sisters here and let them know about that Santee retreat, those ladies down there. And I think they started with, off with 35. They got over 600 now. And their, their, their aim is to address the needs of our people, the young people. They get classes for just, I know the women are there, but the girls have their social, uh, special class. It's just a wonderful thing. And we, we gotta initiate some things. We see needs, now take care of them. Look. Our time, I don't know where it went. Somebody was doing a whole lot of talking around here, I declare. <laughs> we're going to have to, but let's, let's remember, we, we left <laughs> next week, Lord's will, we left ourselves on Mars Hill, and we'll come back and, and deal with that. I want, to, I want to give everyone an opportunity to uh, bring me your, uh, pass up your prayer request, and those that are online likewise, because we're going to have prayer right now. <clears throat> See, they don't do this in the secular schools. <laughs> they just leave. The bell rang, you're going, not in the church. We're, we're going to have <clears throat> prayer uh, service. And so we're going to do just that, <clears throat> and then we'll dismiss. Brother Jack. Yes, sir. Can you add Eric Stevens, the new convert, to your list? Uh, last week he was admitted to the hospital, had breathing issues. Oh, my. But he was released today, and he said he's doing well and resting. Good. Yeah. Good to see Alethea back as well. She has some challenges. Who? Let us pray. Oh, dear God, we are asking that you would bless these that we name and give some uh, description to their concern. We just ask, dear God, from on high that you would look down upon these precious souls and tend to them according to thy will. We pray, dear God, for Brandy Jones. Uh, she says she's in, in need of prayer. 
uh, for charity and direction. A clarity, was that clarity and direction? Bless her and keep her, dear God. She means so much to us. We pray to God for Linda Peoples. She, her prayer request is that she's traveling and uh, her, uh, her granddaughter is graduating. And, we so, and so, dear God, we ask that you would be with them, give them traveling grace as they go to and fro. Sabrina Owens, we are praying, dear God, as she navigates COVID uh, tests, is, uh, the test must be taken, and uh, there's many cases at her job, she says. So we're praying for uh, Sister Owens. Pauline Horton, dear God, we're praying uh, for her that she and her family may uh, continue to grow and be spiritual. She asks us to pray for her family. Father God, we're praying for Eric Stevens. He is now all right. He had a bout with COVID, and we ask your blessings upon him. And then Mary Carter, we also ask, dear God, that you would bless her in a special way. We pray also, dear God, for uh, Sister Angelina Ir Irving. Her son, Giles, is traveling back from college there in Arkansas. We just ask that he likewise will receive uh, traveling grace. Uh, bless us all, dear God, and help us as we open up the class tonight and we talked about things in the Bible, but they're applicable and relevant to us. May we ever find ourselves being soul winners and standing tall with the bloodstained banner of Christ that we might reach a dying and perishing world. Bless us, dear God, and this class may end, but help us to ever be alert and mindful and eager to study your word and to find ourselves ever engaged with holy things. Thank you for everything. Thank you for these precious souls tonight and all they did to make this class successful. Bless us, keep us, go with us. Uh, bless our gospel meeting that is swiftly upon us and bless the work that is going to be done to ensure that it will be a successful meeting, dear God. Bless us all as we uh, continue to serve you. Thank you, thank you again and again for Jesus who made it possible uh, that we can take a stand in Christianity. And not only that, he made it possible that when this life is all over and we're ushered into eternity, we can make heaven our home. Bless us, keep us, and forgive us. In Jesus we pray, and the church said amen and amen. God bless, God bless. I keep falling in love in love over and over and over again I keep falling in love over and over and over and over again He gets sweeter and sweeter as the years go by Oh, what a love between my Savior and I He falling in love in love Me over and 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 Oh, what a love oh, what a between love my Savior and 